experience using HPBSM. My name is Sandy Schubert. I'm one of the co-leaders of the Vivid Business Service Management Special Interest Group, as well as a co-leader of the Pittsburgh and Seattle Vivid Chapters. I'm also the Director of Shared Services for J9 Technologies, a partner of HP Software specializing in the BSM pool. Next slide. Sorry, there we go. This webinar series is brought to you by the Vivid Business Service Management Special Interest Group, led by Jim Copio, Mark Laird, and myself. Our presenter today is Mary Kay Peterson. Mary Kay is the Director of IT Service and Management and Enterprises Security at Mentor Graphics in Oregon. She is a co-leader of the Vivid Service Management Special Interest Group and the chapter leader of the Oregon Vivid Chapter. Some housekeeping. Today's live session is intended for all Vivid members, and the recording will be posted on Vivid's webinar section of the website for all Vivid members. If you have a question as we go along, please type and send them in using the questions pane in the webinar control panel. Here's a picture of the GoToWebinar control panel that usually appears in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. To submit a question, make sure the questions pane is expanded and type in your question and click on Send. So let's get started. We'll pass it over to Mary Kay. Well, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you are. Um, I'm here today to talk about uh, MentorGraphics implementation of HP uh, BSM. We're calling it measuring the customer experience. Um, I've found that uh, when I compare myself uh, uh, or I'm looking at software, it's interesting for me to know a little bit about the company who did an implementation. Uh, so uh, as I compare myself uh, and their ex and experiences, um, I have some kind of backdrop about the company. So Mentor Graphics itself is a, a software manufacturer founded in uh, 1981, so we've been around a good long time. Uh, we primarily do software in the space of electronic design uh, automation, and I'll share a little bit about that in a, in a second. We're publicly held, uh, so um, you know, quarter ends and reporting quarterly earnings are uh, very important. We just passed $1 billion in revenue. That was a significant milestone for us at, at uh, our year end. Uh, we're headquartered here in Wilsonville, Oregon. Uh, we have about 5,000 employees located worldwide uh, at 70 sites and about 5% uh, of the employees are uh, IT employees. And we have a uh, work from anywhere uh, workforce. And so even though we do have 70 sites, we do try to enable technology so people can work wherever they are. Um, our company strategy is we target chip and board designers. So we develop software used by uh, people that have double E, electrical engineering degrees, uh, to design chips uh, and boards. And you can see some of our emerging uh, markets. We definitely try to target markets where uh, our competitors are not. Uh, and we have been getting into things like aerospace, automotive, um, high-tech, and uh, uh, mobile devices. Um, Myself, I joined the company in 1994 uh, on a five-year plan. I'm still here. Um, I started with implementing um, uh, ERP applications, uh, SAP at uh, uh, Menographics. I've done CRM, um, done, done many of the jobs within IT. Um, while I was running global operations, I stumbled across the ITIL framework and it eventually became the champion and department uh, uh, manager of service management. Um, and internally, I'm certainly champion of um, our employees, uh, who we certainly call our customers, and running IT as a business. Uh, and then it was already mentioned I am uh, a Vivid uh, chapter leader. Um, if we look at the IT organization um, and how we're broken down, uh, the areas uh, in blue are what we call enterprise services. So we try to make those as consistent uh, across the globe. Uh, and in this space of global operations and software solutions is really where we targeted our first uh, monitoring uh, efforts. Um, 
and uh, you can see enterprise security is one of the functions I own as well as uh, service management. The three tenets we have within uh, IT is one, innovation. Uh, we are a company of uh, software engineers um, and we uh, are forever trying to help deliver uh, leading edge products uh, and, and services to those engineers to enable multi-site uh, collaboration. We have engineering teams that are um, trying to work together across the globe. Um, we have a strong focus on customer service and operations. And then certainly um, uh, the people of Mentor uh, really are Mentor. Uh, and so empowering our teams and employees. So I guess it was probably in 2007 we came upon the, as we discovered the ITIL framework, we came upon the, and a recognition that IT needed its own portfolio of software uh, to run its business. and, and we came up with this picture and kind of uh, colloquially called it, we needed our own ERP system. Uh, and that's when we started uh, shopping for software. So we had a program management office at that time. Um, uh, service management was the function that I owned. And then I have peers that are running uh, the IT operations uh, and facilities functions. Within uh, service management, you can see you know, the portfolio of things that I've been driving, uh, Global Help Desk. Uh, and uh, we have a vision for a global operations center that is being uh, driven by the help desk right now. Uh, service monitoring and reporting is really what I'm going to talk to you about today. And service level management is something that we are um, looking at as a next step. I also own marketing and communications, strategic vendor management, uh, asset and contract management, change management, and uh, we are looking at a uh, configuration management database. So um, certainly all of these things are uh, uh, process areas that we discovered uh, that was growing a market of, of software uh, when we started looking in 2007 that was trying to help address running those kinds of processes. So uh, we did a uh, selection process and did select HP as our strategic vendor. We found them through a company called uh, Mercury. I think we were just about ready to buy Mercury when HP bought them. And you can see the, the long list of uh, software that we have acquired since that time. It started out with Service Manager, followed by Asset Manager, uh, then DDMI, and uh, uh, and uh, then HP, BSM, and SiteScope are one of some of the more recent uh, purchases. So the challenge from uh, my CIO, this is an Anthony Andrea, I report directly to him, is that you know it's the very typical story where uh, IT is reporting metrics, uh, the business looks at the metrics and says, that's not been my experience. Uh, uh, our end users were definitely finding problems before we did. We had component level monitoring, but component ma level monitoring doesn't give you um, the end user perspective. And so we set out, embarked on a project uh, about uh, two years ago uh, to look at monitoring from an end user perspective. And this was our uh, project uh, objective statement. So our approach, and I thought it would be um, interesting to share this approach, um, not necessarily unique, but something I think we did that uh, helped us be more successful, um, you know, certainly was to uh, conduct an assessment. And J9, um, who actually uh, uh, is part of this uh, uh, SIG, um, stepped in and helped us with identifying a uh, uh, roadmap or a set of gaps on a roadmap. Um, typically we do an RFP with vendors since HP was already a strategic vendor. Um, we look at them first and sometimes the question is uh, why not HP? Because um, we look to the integrations with HP. Uh, I guess I would say don't underestimate how difficult it is to integrate across vendor products even though they may tell you um, uh, it's easier we have an integration. It usually requires a, a fistful of dollars and, and somebody's time to get it done. Um, once we have selected a, a winner through an RFP, we do a proof of concept. And we did that with HP, where we brought, brought the products in and actually had their engineers kick the tires. Um, and uh, 
at the end of the proof of concept, we'll make a value decision. Do we think the software is going to do for us what we would like it to do? Um, and in this case, we uh, answered uh, yes. In fact, we've been looking at the Mercury product since about 2005. So the next step is something that's unique. Even though HP would have loved to have sold me all the software I would need to cover every application at Mentor, we decided to do a small uh, paid pilot. So we selected um, uh, a couple of you know key services. One of them was email. Everybody lives and dies on email these days. And the next was um, a uh, business service that's used to deliver our software. And part of the infrastructure sits at Mentor. Part of the infrastructure sits at an external um, uh, VAR, or I'm sorry, an external uh, service provider. Um, so we thought trying to figure out how to jump the chasm uh, into the cloud, so to speak, um, would be something interesting. Um, at the end of a pilot, we again make a, a value decision and then either walk away or scale based on what the pilot results uh, are. Um, another key um, uh, strategy that we use is that we use consulting to implement, uh, but ultimately train our staff. Um, I, I look at consultants as, um, as personal trainers uh, for our organization. So our journey began with uh, J9, as I uh, previously mentioned, uh, uh, doing a free assessment for us. And so they certainly um, used that as uh, a way to entice us to take a risk and use them as a provider. Um, you know, the, the assessment was, I would say, fairly uh, lightweight, but some of the challenges we gave to J9 is, one, review our current monitoring landscape, and, and we're practical. We wanted to leverage our current investments. So if I already had component monitoring in place, uh, you know, for the data center, uh, my first problem wasn't to rip and replace that. Um, I wanted to find the gaps in our monitoring and, and address those first. Uh, so J9 helped us identify gaps and then build a roadmap um, into how we could address those gaps. Um, and then the next was a, uh, a paid-for pilot uh, where we selected the um, uh, software delivery business transaction. Uh, we bought SiteScope, uh, I'm sorry, we bought APM360 uh, and uh, some SiteScope points and consulting and uh, conducted this 90-day pilot. Uh, at the end of the pilot, um, you know, what we uh, discovered or what was highlighted on our roadmap was, one, um, migrating from a place of having SLOs, which is service level objectives, uh, to true SLAs with, with customers. Um, the second was um, looking at uh, validating performance of uh, key business applications, and then uh, finally, what we decided on as far as where our value proposition was is uh, deploying event management, uh, end user, and application monitoring, um, and unifying our system and business process monitoring into uh, to provide a central visibility and establish a, a central operations bridge. Yeah. So our, our project objectives uh, became, um, first of all, really ratifying that list of critical IT services. So we're an SAP shop. People can say SAP is important, but not all within SAP is equal. Uh, when you're a software business and uh, you know people can order things really up to the last minute and in the quarter, uh, being able to book orders and deliver software is a critical or critical transactions within SAP. So I would say one of the um, you know, the most beneficial um, outcomes of this objective was really agreeing with our customers on what's critical and what defines success. Uh, and you know, I, I would say of all all the things in this project, um, that was probably one of the most um, beneficial outcomes. Um, the second was uh, measurement of uh, critical services from a user perspective. So again, we were really, frankly, blind into the end user experience. We had component level monitoring that could tell you if a server or a database was up or down, but we couldn't tell if, for example, order processing was healthy 
uh, unless we called the order processing department and asked how things were going. Uh, again, our goal from the CIO was to find out uh, that we were having issues before our customers did. Um, the next area was performance trending and out-of-bounds uh, alerts. So as a global company, uh, we host uh, all of our business applications out of Wilsonville, Oregon here. Of course, performance on the LAN is uh, quite good. But as you step away from Wilsonville and try to use uh, SAP, we really needed visibility into uh, performance of our applications. Uh, and to be able to understand if things are trending in an unfavorable direction and address those before our, uh, our users brought uh, those issues to our attention. Um, next area was centralizing visibility of IT alerts. So again, we had component level monitoring, you know, pagers firing uh, to system administrators all over the globe, but really didn't have central visibility uh, into what was going on. And the last area is a consistent critical incident response uh, process by centralizing alerts, by having a process everyone agrees on. When we do have an incident, um, we certainly reduce our time to respond uh, with better incident handling. The implementation, uh, so we defined uh, about 30 uh, business transactions that we felt were critical to the business. And we broke the project into uh, batches um, for each transaction um, or, I guess, business process area, such as order entry, we, we gave them a budget of uh, three to five transaction points to figure out if that transaction was healthy. Uh, one of the first things that we discovered is that um, the, the technology, uh, BPM, Business Process Monitor, um, was fairly easy uh, to build transactions. Um, however, the long path really was about Mentor Graphics as a company deciding on what to monitor. Uh, so the project manager established a startup kit for the application teams who wanted end user monitoring of what are the prerequisites required uh, before we can really engage and set up transaction monitors for you. So it would involve things like what are the transactions you want to monitor um, and uh, establishing in some cases, we had to establish uh, a monitoring uh, user, if you will. So if you wanted to uh, log in and check that you could go log into a system, um, we certainly didn't want to use a developer account for that login. We had to establish a monitoring user. Um, and then once we had uh, the prerequisites uh, set up, then we could schedule the consultant uh, to uh, come in and help us build the transactions. Um, although over time, we really actually did most of the work in-house. Um, and then the, a very important step is establishing a release process. Once you have a monitoring transaction in place, you have to align with the application release process so that if the application changes, then you have to consider does your monitoring transaction need to change uh, to um, incorporate whatever changes were made at the application level. This particular dashboard is not something you're going to find from HP. It's something we actually built ourselves uh, using a uh, technology called uh, ClickView. But this uh, dashboard depicts um, the various applications or business process areas uh, that we define. So ESDM, uh, Electronic Software Download uh, Mechanism, was the very complex transaction that uh, uh, touched things in-house mentor graphics and also uh, in, in the cloud. Uh, and you can see that we show what the status is and then uh, the last time um, the transaction was updated. Uh, you can actually see in red here uh, where something failed and it depicts where uh, the failure occurred. Um, additionally, so this is really the overview um, dashboard. We do have a drill in for uh, performance uh, and response over time and server uptime. Um, certainly one of the things that is key to establishing SLAs with customers is you have to be able to uh, measure things. If you can't measure things, it's very, very difficult to make commitments. So the results uh, were. Um, as I mentioned, order fulfillment system availability uh, is vital to ensure we can book late in the quarter. Um, since we are a public company, we have to report our financials 
uh, after the quarter end. That's another area uh, where we placed uh, some uh, transaction monitors. Um, and I would say one of the, the overarching things that really has happened is IT and the business engaged in talking about what's important and the business feels um, a sense of confidence that um, IT knows what's critical and we know if those transactions are functioning. And you can see a quote from our Director of Order, uh, Global Operations, uh, Chris Berger, um, uh, that he gave IT, uh, IT that uh, um, was uh, uh, a nice result to the, to the project. Um, from a lessons learned uh, perspective, um, I think one of the most important things is that we're having data-driven discussions with the business. So rather than someone's perception that IT applications are always down, we actually have data uh, on availability and performance to have those discussions. Um, discussing with the business on what specific transactions were critical and how best to monitor, um, I still say is one of the most priceless things about this project and really forms the basis for uh, SLA. So now we know which, what the transactions are. Uh, we are measuring baseline of performance. Um, and now we can have discussions about, um, you know, are things meeting expectations? If they are not, then what do we need to do um, to address that? Um, an additional lesson was uh, it really did take, in some cases, uh, a much longer time than we anticipated to set up the monitoring user. Uh, probably the, one of the more difficult ones was uh, order entry, um, where we actually wanted to simulate uh, across systems. Um, we have found that some of our failure points are the interfaces between systems versus just the standalone system itself. And so we wanted to actually run transactions through uh, order monitoring uh, through to delivery. Uh, and so we had to work actually with our internal auditors on being able to describe uh, what these dummy transactions were, and so when audits occurred, uh, they understood that these zero-dollar transactions um, did not certainly affect our financial reporting. Um, another lesson that we learned is that uh, even though at times HP software feels like it's complex, in this particular case, uh, we were uh, very surprised uh, at how easy it was to set up these synthetic transactions. Uh, and J9 uh, certainly enabled us um, with the different flavors of transactions you can set up, uh, teaching us um, you know, how to fish, so to speak. Uh, but we are largely on our own uh, setting up those transactions and really only use J9 when we have bandwidth issues um, getting work done. Um, the last point that I wanted to make is that this was one of our first experiences at buying HP software through a VAR. Uh, instead of HP Direct. And one of the pleasant outcomes of um, this experience is that by having J9 doing the consulting for us, as well as providing our first line support, um, we are really quick to conclude on was it a configuration issue with the software uh, or is it really an HP bug and that needs to get filed and uh, J9 uh, certainly has good contacts inside of HP to help us um, escalate anything that is uh, that has been critical. Um, so I, I really look to this kind of model uh, as I buy HP software in the future to get my support through the VAR that helped me do uh, the configuration. So we were getting uh, about halfway through the project and then the president of the company uh, asked an interesting question and created sort of a a bonus project within the project. And his question was a fair one, which is, are we fully utilizing our server investments? So while we had been spending all of our time really looking at end user uh, um, transaction experience, uh, he pulled us into a project and we happened to have some site scope points. Site scope is really more the component level monitoring uh, points available to very quickly um, uh, deploy to about 2,100 servers uh, and establish uh, a consistent capacity uh, planning mechanism. Um, so initially we were looking at CPU and memory on all engineering standalone servers. Uh, we use grid and also virtual servers uh, to try to determine how we make capital investments. 
probably about three, four years ago, um, IT became the uh, procurement um, arm for engineering for buying new equipment. And without any sort of economics in the, in the equation, engineering could ask for uh, equipment, and uh, IT had really little defense to decide whether that investment should be made or not. Uh, so um, SiteScope here is really, again, allowing us to make decisions with data. Uh, in the first quarter that we deployed, uh, we deflected about 90% of our, our server capital um, you know, while we were really trying to determine um, if, if it made sense to make uh, capital investments. Uh, so again, engineers are, are, uh, um, are making, having data-driven discussions with, with engineering. So where do we go from here? Uh, so in the beginning, uh, I guess we were blind from the end user experience. Um, we definitely uh, have monitoring in place so we can see what our critical transactions are. Um, we certainly have established credibility on our uh, ability to deliver monitoring as a service um, within the business and within IT. Uh, so as part of putting together budget for this year, I had uh, my peers in business operations and engineering operations step forward and ask the question uh, about uh, getting SiteScope deployed for their operations uh, for under the business data center and also we are standing up some new regional um, data centers. Um, another next step is looking at um, a product called DDMA which allows you to map relationships between components and then link them to business services. So we are going to do a pilot uh, this year with uh, DDMA uh, and standing up our first use CMDB. Um, and then last, uh, looking at further uh, deployment of BPM for kind of a next tier of applications. You know, once you get this kind of visibility in place, you really want it as, in as many places uh, as you can um, where you have applications deploy that um, users are counting on. Uh, and then uh, last areas are um, looking at operations manager, OMI, uh, as a way to consolidate events um, across our component monitoring. And then we've been evaluating uh, HP Service Health Reporter uh, for uh, capacity planning. And with that, uh, that is uh, what I have to share with you uh, all this morning. Um, uh, available here for a bit longer for uh, questions if there are any. Okay, thank you very much Mary Kay for sharing your experiences with us today. Uh, we do have several questions um, that we're going to go through so if any of the rest of you have any questions now would be the time to submit them. Um, the first question that we have is did you perform an ROI analysis? Did we perform? Uh, I would say um, uh, yes, we did, although uh, it's very difficult to put an ROI uh, on uh, finding things before the, the customers uh, do. In, in the business of mentor graph graphics uh, with EDA software, competition is not necessarily just a click away. Um, the, the technical sales cycle takes um, anywhere from uh, you know, maybe three to nine months long, uh, and so um, that phenomena made it difficult with, uh, for us over time to try to justify these kinds of purchases. Um, but again, the uh, CIO uh, endorsed that it was important for us to find things before the users did. Okay, the next question is, how many site scope points did you start with for around 2100 servers? Uh, for site scope, we had about 4500 points and so the way that SiteScope works is that with every metric you desire to measure, it requires a point. And so with the servers, we chose CPU utilization and memory utilization as the first two metrics, which consumed two points. Uh, so for 2,100 servers, you would need 4,200 points. Okay, the next one is why was it necessary to build your own dashboard? Um, was the BSM, sorry, this is a long one, was the BSM dashboard, I can't get the rest of the question on this one. Um, 
I would, I would guess I can kind of get the gist. Oh, inadequate. Was the BSM dashboard inadequate? I apologize. Okay. So what we found was is that, um, and I, I've actually challenged my group again with this with this question: uh, Why are we building the, our own dashboard when uh, one came with BSM? Uh, we have done uh, a lot of our reporting using uh, ClickView uh, technology, and uh, what we what I have found is that our our time to market of dashboard level down to detail level is just much faster with ClickView. So while we could um, certainly mock up um, some level of uh, dashboard within BSM, and I would encourage you all, if you're uh, exploring that, to definitely look at what comes with uh, BSM. Uh, we found it just aligned with uh, other strategy to use Click for, ClickView for reporting. OK. Uh, one is, are you using it on my? I think you said that you're considering that. We are uh, actually uh, considering that right now, yep. Okay. And that's really consolidation of events uh, because, you know, certainly a next step. Right now our monitoring uh, sends an email to the help desk and that triggers uh, our critical incident response process. Um, a next step is really to um, uh, really automatically feed those alerts into HP Service Manager. And uh, that is best done through an integration using OMI. OK. The next question is, did you consider HP Operations Manager for any agent-based monitoring? And why or why not? For, say again, for any agent-based monitoring? Yes. Um, we uh, looked at it, but I guess really arrived at SiteScope as, being, uh, as providing uh, good enough monitoring for us. Um, you know, I guess my, my experience over time with, with monitoring, and everybody has certainly different experiences, is that you can gather a lot of metrics with some of these tools, uh, but you really have to ask yourself the question, what are you really going to use at the end of the day? Um, you can fill up disks full of um, metrics, um, but unless you have uh, somebody who's going to spend time, and then, unless it's driving some kind of decisions, uh, it, it's not necessarily helpful. Uh, the one thing we did like about SiteScope it, is it is agentless, uh, and it was very quick to deploy. Okay. The next question was similar to that on Operations Manager. So um, can you explain more about the value-based decision-making process you went through when moving from POC to pilot and to full deployment? Yeah. Um, yeah, actually, that's a, a great point, because I think there is some, a point I missed there. Um, the, the POs, the proof of concept, uh, that we did, really the, the paid for. First it was really bringing HP in here um, for maybe less than a week just to kind of show us the technology. You see things on PowerPoint, they seem uh, conceptually under, you know, interesting, but it's really bringing the software in here, standing it up and, and saying how hard is this to do, do we see the value um, in a very limited way. The paid for pilot really gave us the ability to kick the tires of this technology understand what it was going to take uh, to manage over time, what kind of resources were we going to uh, need, um, did we really get the time to market. But I think one of the most priceless things about that pilot was we understood the HP licensing model um, a whole lot better. And so when we did make our purchase, um, we purchased exactly what we thought we were going to use and didn't and it did not end up with shelfware. So we originally bought the APM 360 licenses and discovered there were only two of the products within the five that come uh, with APM uh, that were going to be, that were going to work for Mentor. So we bought those two products uh, and, and no more. And I, I would say at the end of this, the good news is, is we fully deployed everything we bought. Um, that doesn't always happen. It always seems like there's extra pieces and parts that you bought that you thought you were going to use. Um, that uh, just didn't happen for whatever reason. Do you use templates for SiteScope to deploy standard monitors? We do, um, and we came up with the, and that was one of the, the uh, um, ways that SiteScope helps bring a quick time to market. You build a template uh, for the servers, and I think it probably involves CPU and memory, which is probably a fairly simple uh, template, uh, and then um, and then you just deploy it in mass. So if we want to update that 
template, we can update it and again deploy in mass. Right now for the business data center, we're working on um, defining what metrics we want to gather for that um, operation and we'll design a template that can be deployed consistently across the, the data center. Okay. What type of monitoring are you performing with SiteScope? Anything besides performance related? Well, a byproduct of performance is availability. So the two uh, key metrics that we are um, looking at right now are availability of uh, systems and uh, performance. Okay. So those, those are really the two that we're looking at. Were you using only SiteScope for component-based monitoring or agents also? Uh, we were using, we are using only uh, site scope. Uh, now in, in some part of the operation with Mentor, we still have some traditional uh, component-based monitoring uh, going on with uh, some open source products like Nagios uh, and Hobbit, uh, some other uh, competing products um, from Microsoft and Quest, and we're looking at, uh, at uh, deploying site scope um, Across that uh, across that landscape. Okay, are you integrated with any ticketing tool? Uh, I would say the integration right now is is manual, but uh, HP Service Manage Manager is our ticketing tool, and we're looking at the integration using OMI. So the events from SiteScope uh, or BPM would go into uh, OMI, uh, and then. Um, uh, the integration is between OMI and HP Service Manager. Okay. I was wondering about uh, implementing BPM monitoring for SAP. Did your accounting or compliance department have any issues with allowing a monitoring user to access SAP? Heck yeah. Um, absolutely. So that was one of the you know surprise ones where we wanted to actually use a, a synthetic transaction. And so ultimately what we uh, we did have uh, finance involved, uh, uh, order fulfillment, certainly since we were uh, doing synthetic orders, um, probably revenue accounting, and our internal audit department. And what we did is really just fully disclosed what we were up to. We have a monitoring user that is booking $0 orders. Uh, we, can, we can produce reports that show that they, these are $0 uh, orders, um, so from a an audit perspective, you can clearly see um, we uh, can show the um, capability of what this um, what, what this user can do inside of uh, SAP, which is it certainly cannot uh, transact um, real orders. Um, so it, it did take a bit of time and um, uh, convincing, but it was really um, we ultimately did achieve uh, the ability to monitor order processing. Okay. Are you utilizing the SLA feature in BSM, and what value do you feel that it provides? Are we utilizing SLAs? Uh, I would say probably not um, fully, um, since we have pulled and are doing some of our SLA stuff outside of uh, BSM. Um, I'd, I'd probably have to follow up on that uh, particular question. We are measuring two things. We're looking at availability of transactions, and we're looking at performance of transactions, baselining uh, those metrics, and those will ultimately be used as part of our SLA discussions with, with uh, our internal customer base. Okay, I think you kind of addressed this with OMI, but are you using any topology-based event management? Topology-based event management. Um, I'm not sure what that means. I think that will be more when you get into the OMI. Okay. Have you evaluated HP RUM to be used in conjunction with BPM? Yes, we did uh, and that, evaluate that. And I actually just talked with my J9 consultant yesterday about uh, real user monitoring is what RUM stands for. Um, we are in a uh, we are a highly virtualized uh, environment. I think most, if not all, of our business apps, uh, maybe sans the database backend, uh, is virtualized, and uh, we were not able to use RUM uh, with our architecture. 
Okay. I think you've kind of addressed this one already, but what product are you using to monitor your servers other than the CPU and memory from SiteScope? Uh, it's uh, SiteScope for all the engineering servers, um, and, and again, uh, we have a, a variety of products. Any automation like operations orchestration in place or planned? Uh, there is actually on the engineering side of the house, they are looking at server automate, or actually we've done a pilot um, with uh, server automation and operations orchestration. Um, operations orchestration is an, another thing we discussed yesterday is something that could be used with monitoring. If you detect some kind of condition, you can then fire off operations orchestration to take some kind of step. It might be to restart a service. If the service still doesn't restart, then uh, alert um, someone that uh, uh, something needs to be done. Um, I would say that's kind of a next step in maturity. Um, with a, lo a lot of this, I mean, HP sells a very holistic um, process flow. Um, you have to decide, and for a company our size, we decided that uh, gaining visibility into um, end user experience was the first step we wanted to take, and, and now we will look at next steps in maturity. How was your transition from BAC to BSN? With such a vast difference in the two versions, what was the most difficult task? Uh, we were fortunate enough to um, really start out on uh, BSM 9.0, uh, so we, we did not have to make a 8 to 9 transition. We actually were probably one of the first uh, customers, and, and I, I would say the only thing we were challenged with is that the consulting community, including J9, the product was very new to them as well. So there was a little bit of learning learning curve for everybody. How do you address storage and network layer monitoring? How are they integrated into your monitoring suite? Uh, at this point, they are separate. So we are using uh, separate tools for uh, network monitoring um, and uh, storage resource management. Um, ultimately, it, you know, the events certainly come together uh, at the help desk. Uh, level, but uh, from a product perspective, they're separate right now. We're actually looking at uh, HP product for um, for networking right now. Is SiteScope monitoring mostly Unix server or Windows server, or is it a combination of both? Uh, it's both. It's definitely both. All right. Any plans to use NNM for network monitoring and integrate that with BSM? Uh, evaluating. Has BSM been stable for you? I would say uh, largely yes. Uh, I, I know that the upgrade we did to, I believe it was 9.1, we had some bumps. Um, as I always uh, certainly tell my team, um, I don't take upgrades just because they come out, um, because oftentimes you're uh, exchanging, you're fixing known bugs but introducing unknown. Um, and so I think we had a little bit of instability, but J9 helped us work through it. Did you run into any challenges politically in putting monitoring on the applications from the app owner, and how did you manage that? You know, that was, that was interesting. Um, the corporation here really seemed to want monitoring, and even though you might think that the application groups are saying, like, oh, no, Big Brother is here to, to watch us, I think they felt that um, their availability and performance was better than what was being characterized. So when you only are when you only have perception to deal with as your data points, um, you know those stories can get uh, uh, embellished as being something much bigger, or uglier than what really is going on. Um, so the apps team were were actually really welcoming uh, this, and I think from a business perspective. Um, the business appreciated being engaged in the discussion about um, what they felt was vitally important and then knowing that we were watching it. So it was, it was positive, I think, all around. Okay, and I have one more question. How many BPM probes have you deployed? We have uh, deployed, I think we're probably coming close to 150. And again, we gave a budget of uh, three to five, um, you know, transaction points per 
per application. I think in some some ways the apps team probably want more, uh, and uh, and so we just started out with trying to get breadth of coverage first before we we get into really depth of coverage. Okay, well that's all the questions that I have. Mary Kate, I'd like to thank you again so much for sharing um, with us today and taking the time to do so. I'd like to th also thank all of you. It's great to have all of the questions. And so thank you very much for your participation. I um, just wanted to let you all know that this presentation will be posted to the Vivit website for your future reference. And also in the next several weeks, be watching for a survey coming out to the BSM SIG. We'd like to know how we can best tailor the SIG to meet your needs. And then towards the end of May, we'll be holding our next BSM SIG webinar. So thank you again for your participation today, and have a great day.